Hello, everyone. Pray all is well with you and your families. This is Pastor Lance Wallace. Um, as you as you know by now, uh, my wife has passed. Yesterday, May two weeks, she's passed. Um, died right in my arms in my car. And I just thought to come on and share my story with you guys. Um, as Pastor Jeff has told me that you guys are doing your series of prayers now. And um, your theme for this one is attitude of gratitude. And I, I just want to touch base with you and, you know, share with you my story and let you know that, you know, we really have to have an attitude of gratitude. We really have to, you know, be reminded of the fact that in all things we have to give thanks. In all things, all, all things. That the word all encompasses everything. And everything that we go through in life, the good, the bad, and the ugly, we have to be in a place, get to a place in our lives where we realize that, you know, it could have been worse. And so, God, I still thank you. I still trust you. I still praise you. I still love you. And I always tell people, my soul loves Jesus. Why did I say it could have been worse? I could have ended up with a double tragedy. My wife, I went to the food store. Me, me and my wife was on the road riding and laughing and talking, you know. She was in the back seat feeding the baby. Um, you know, and I, we just stopped at the food store. I said, babes, let me just stop to the food store and get you some fruits, you know. And I went in the food store and the only thing I got was the fruits and I came right out. And by the time I came out now, keep in mind, she was just laughing and talking. You know, and, and she said, boy, don't bring me no bruise or banana and I want some apples, some orange. We were just laughing, having a good time, you know, because we had just finished eating our Subway and everything was normal. And I went in the food store, got the fruits, and by the time I came out, not even five minutes, because the only thing I picked up was the fruits. And when I came out, I met my wife. I thought she was sleeping on the seat. I thought she had fallen asleep, because she was laid out on the seat. And I said to her, I said, Donnie, you drop sleep, and she kind of on the floor. But when I looked closely, my wife was foaming at the mouth and her fist was clenched. Now, keep in mind, my wife is 38 years old. She never had seizure in her life. Never had a seizure in her life. And so she was having a seizure, you know, foaming at the mouth, body twitching and all of that. And so when I saw what happened, I quickly opened the door and I picked up the baby. Now, my baby is only four months. She was on her head in between the two seats. That's why I said it could have been worse. I could have had double tragedy on my hand. My, 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 my four-month-old baby could have died. She was on the floor in the, in the, between the two seats in the car. My wife is in the back having a seizure, tears rolling down her eye because she's probably thinking, Lance is in the food store, Shekinah's on the ground, and I can't even pick up, I can't even do anything. So she's probably just, you know, saying, I hope Lance, I have to get back. Because tears was coming out of her eye. So what I did, I quickly reassured her to put her mind at ease. I say, hey, I got Shekinah. Shekinah's okay. Ain't nothing happened. Don't worry about her. She's good. And I just was, you know, telling her, stay with me, stay with me, stay with me, Donnie. Stay with me. And this is in the parking lot in Super Value, Golden Gates. I'm just telling her, stay with me, Donnie. Stay with me, baby. And I was holding her mouth open, you know, so as to avoid her biting her, th her, her tongue. So holding her mouth open so she don't bite her tongue. I'm just telling her, stay with me, stay with me. She kind of is okay. She good. And I watched when she just stopped twitching. Remember, her fist was clenching. So I watched when her, her fist opened up. She took her last breath. And I felt the life just leave her body. I, I, right in my arms, she took her last breath. When I tell you we have to have an attitude of gratitude, man, listen. Like I tell you, it could have happened while I was driving. It didn't have to happen in the parking lot. It could happen while I was driving and I panicked and the three of us could have been dead. So don't care what you're going through in this life. Remember, it always could have been worse. Remember, God has a plan. Remember, he has a plan. The reason I'm saying that my wife and I were just making so many plans for the new year. This was on December 29th. Had a beautiful, awesome, wonderful Christmas. We're making plans to christen Shekinah next month. We're making plans to go back to the bank and get our house this year. We're making plans, but God had other plans. God had other plans. <laughs> Listen, it just pays to be ready, man. It pays to be ready. And God is so awesome. He's strengthening me so much. The fact that I'm able to sit here and talk about this like this, God is strengthening me so much.
You know how I know that God is strengthening me and God got me? This happened on Wednesday and Friday night. I was able to go to church and preach for watch night. I was able to go back to church and preach on Sunday. Every relationship is different. My wife and I had a beautiful, awesome, wonderful relationship. And so for me to have that kind of strength, I know it's only God. I, I'm on supernatural strength. He ain't my strength. My strength is gone. I'm on his strength. And I really proved that God's strength is perfect when our strength is gone. We, we, we hear that he's the lifter of our head, but we have to go through some things so that we can experience it. We hear that he's our strength and, he, and, and, and he's the comforter on all these things. But we have to go through some things that we will know. How will you know that I'm a healer if I don't let you sick? I don't let you get sick. How will you know that I'm a friend that stick it closer than a brother if I don't let your friends walk away? We have to go through some things in life. And when God wants to use you in a mighty way, he will give you a mighty test. He will allow you to go down a ruggy road because he has some things that he wants to do in your life. Remember when, when, when Job was going through the roughest time of his life? The devil didn't bring up Job. God brought up Job. The devil said, man, I've been, I've been, I've been, I've been, uh, you know, going through, you know, to and fro the earth and, and, and wreaking havoc, man. And God brought up Job. God said, yeah, you, you bragging about what you did. Have you considered my servant Job out of there's none like him in the earth? A perfect and an upright man. One that fear God and, 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 and hates evil with a passion. God brought up Job. And I believe that sometimes God will take us to a great test. And he wants to be able to use our lives as a reference point. Just as he did with Job. He wants to prove to the devil. I have some people who ain't going to bow. I have some people who ain't going to back up. Who ain't going to flinch in the face of adversity. Don't, don't, don't care what I allow to come into their lives. Their faith is anchored in me. They're not going to go back on me. God need to be able to speak up for you like that. God need to be able to use your life as a reference point And speak up for you and say, have you considered my servant, Pastor Jeff Evans? I know whatever I allow to come his way he ain't gonna back up he ain't gonna flinch he ain't gonna go back on me he gonna trust me with everything that he got and so i say to god i say god i thank you for trusting me knowing that you, I, I gonna pass the test you know and god god has been faithful man god is awesome god is awesome man god is awesome and i, I just thought to share my story with you guys man god is awesome listen stay close to god and and and, and, and like i say pays to be ready you don't know when your time is coming you know something? My wife said some things to me. I didn't think about it then, but I thought about it after the fact. She said to me the other day, because my wife didn't, she wasn't interested in bathing the baby no more, getting a dress, feeding her, changing her palm, but she always wanted me to do it. And I said, why are you stopping me from doing what I do and calling me way in the room to, to, to come change the kind of palm? But she said, I just want you all two to have a closer bond. I just want you to get, you know, to get closer. I want her to get more attached to you. She was preparing me right then. Let me tell you how awesome God is. God, so God, 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 sometimes I say God do something else, you know. I say God do something else. I went in the food store and I got the fruits, right? Since I only got the fruits, I didn't go on the long line at the register. I went right to the drug counter. And while I was to the drug counter, I remembered that my wife's toothbrush needed to change. So I was telling the lady, give me one of them toothbrushes. And God said right there, uh, she don't need the toothbrush. Don't get the toothbrush. Now, I knew that her toothbrush needed to change. But since God says she ain't need a toothbrush, I just didn't get it because I just trust him like that. And when I went to the car and saw what happened, a day or two after that, that came back to me and I said, wow, that's why she didn't need the toothbrush. <laughs> I said, and those fruits wasn't for her, those fruits was for me. I thought those fruits was for her, but they were for me because right when that happened, I lost my appetite for days. And then I started to eat on those fruits. Well, listen, trust God. Trust God, trust God, trust God. Trust God. Some people say, but how you get so strong? Trust God. How come you encouraging people and you going through? God made me an encourager and so I got to encourage people. I, I, that's in eight. That's in me. I can't help but encourage somebody even while I'm going through. And I leave this with you, man. Trust God. Always remember to have an attitude of gratitude. God bless you today, man. Get closer to God. Your New Year's resolution ain't ought to be a new house, a new, a new car, uh, more money, or uh, losing weight. It, not, it ought to be I'm going to get closer to God in this year. That ought to be all of our New Year's resolution. And I hope this message has been a source of inspiration and encouragement to you. And I want to say God bless you, man. Stay with Jesus. I love you guys. Be blessed.